I can't decide if my voice sounds more like Nick Nolte or Sherrod Brown, but either way, it's not good. $22 trillion. That's 22 with 12 zeros after it. 22 trillion. It's also a big number. It's the national debt in this country, which is bad. Or is it? Before I get into that whole can of worms, let's explain what the uh, actual hell we are talking about, shall we? Every year, the federal government spends X amount of money, takes in Y amount of money. When X is greater than Y, we create a budget deficit. When you add up all the annual budget deficits, you get the national debt. Hmm. Think of it in your own life. Say you take in $50,000 a year and you spend $55,000. That means you have an annual budget deficit of $5,000. If you make and spend that same amount for 20 straight years, your personal debt would be five times 20 equals $100,000. See that? Nailed it. Boom. Got it? Good. So to put it very simply, over the course of our republic, we have spent $22 trillion more than we have taken in, which is, this is a mathematical term, a lot. In fact, the national debt right now is the largest it has ever been. In the last decade or so, we are adding to that debt at record rates. At the end of 2000, for example, the national debt was, seems manageable now, 5.6 trillion. Eight years later, it had roughly doubled to just over 10 trillion. Now, 22 trillion, which makes us the most indebted country in the world. We did it. The U.S. has almost always had some sort of national debt. Way back in 1789, the Treasury Department was created to help us manage our debt. By 1790, the country was $75 million in debt. A sidebar, we now add that amount, $75 million, to the national debt roughly every hour. Now, the only time we paid it off was in 1835 under President Andrew Jackson, and we have been spending more than we've been taking in every year since 2001. Now, this is bad, right? After all, if you owe $100,000 in personal debt, you are paying interest on that debt every year. And as the amount you owe goes up, so too does the interest payment. Now, that's broadly true for the government too. Federal government, it's just like our lives, which does sound like a problem, except for the fact that the Federal Reserve, which is essentially the bank of the United States, has kept interest rates very low for a very long time meaning that the government's interest payments haven't been all that bad-ish. In 2017, for example, interest on in our national debt was $276 billion, which was less than 7% of the total budget for the country in that year. Now, back in the 90s, when interest rates were higher, our interest payments were more than 15% of our overall budget. So, hey, we're in the clear. Here's the rub. With the economy humming back to life, the Fed has begun to raise interest rates. And there are currently two planned rate hikes in 2019, though the Fed has indicated it could slow down that schedule if need be. But it still means the amount the government will owe on its debt is very likely going to go up. And it might go way up. The Congressional Budget Office has estimated that it's going to cost the government nearly three times as much to pay off its debt in 2027 as it does right now. Why? How? Well, because our politicians, don't act surprised, have done a few things over the past decade that have sped up the difference between what we spend and what we take in. The big one, of course, of recent vintage was the massive tax cut plan that President Donald Trump and congressional Republicans pushed through and into law in late 2017. That law is estimated to add 1.9 trillion, again, trillion with a T, 12 zeros, to the debt by 2028. And before that, President George W. Bush's $700 billion bank bailout and President Barack Obama's $787 billion economic stimulus package also helped to drive debt through the roof. And then there's the fact that the baby boomers are getting older and older, which shoots Medicare and Social Security costs skyward with really no end in sight. And you add all that to the fact that wars like the one in Iraq and Afghanistan cost a whole lot of money. So what do we do? Well, there's a seemingly simple solution. Start spending less than we make every year, tightening our collective belts by, among other things, reforming massive entitlement programs like, well, Medicare and Social Security. Sorry, baby boomers. Except those programs are popular, just like tax cuts are popular. And breaking news, politicians like to do things that are, wait for it, popular. And politicians hate to do things that are unpopular. And they always do have this out. 
the national debt isn't exactly like your personal debt. If you owe $100,000, the only way you get out of debt is to save money by making more and or spending less. The US government has a much easier option. It can just print more money. And while you probably have to pay off your personal debts within some time period, the US government can theoretically carry a massive debt forever. In fact, there's an argument gaining some traction in politics these days that running a large national debt isn't really any big deal at all. That's called modern monetary theory, and it relies on the two unique traits of the US debt. Number one, the government can always print more money, and number two, we never really, theoretically, have to pay it off. Spend away, the thinking goes, on things like, say, the Green New Deal, a program pushed by liberals in Congress that would overhaul much of the economy and energy structures in society to deal with the urgent threat of climate change. The price tag? No one really knows, but let's just ballpark it in the trillions. Now, most people, and that includes most economists, don't have that who cares attitude about our mounting debt. The big concern is that if the economy hits a major downturn, it may be impossible with such a big debt for the Fed or anyone else to stimulate the economy back into action. And that could lead to inflation or even hyperinflation, where the cost of everything we buy goes way, way up. And our currency starts to become not just devalued, but essentially meaningless. That's not a pretty picture, but it is the point. We make New Point episodes every week. Check them out every Tuesday and Thursday.